Hello, I'm Alan Hawes. Welcome back to Cypress Academy. In this video, I'll change the default behavior of the CCG3 device that's on the CY4531 kit using the Easy PD Configuration Utility. Programmability, in fact, reprogrammability, is one of the hallmark features of the Cypress Type-C products. This programmability allows you to change your device's functionality when the USB spec changes, or when you need to control a different AC to DC adapter circuit, or a different multiplexer, or when you need to support multiple device capabilities and vendor or product IDs in a single design. Cypress is embedded in tomorrow, your tomorrow. We don't know what's going to happen, and our Type-C programmability provides you protection against a changing world. First, I'll change jumper three to short pins two and three so that the kit will be powered from the USB mini connector. And then I'll connect the kit to a USB port on my laptop using that connector. This is going to allow me to reprogram the CCG3 device using the Cypress USB to serial bridge chip that's functioning as a programmer in this dev kit. The bridge connects the USB mini connector on one side and the CCG3 chip on the other side and allows the CCG3 to be reprogrammed. Now I'll open the EasyPD configuration utility. Note that the software sees the CCG device that's already connected. The first thing I'll do in the utility is click the Read From Device icon. I'll select Notebook. When I do that, notice that on the right side of the window, it shows me that there's two versions of the firmware, the running firmware and the alternate firmware. This is because the CCG3 device contains two firmware images. This protects you from bad things happening. By allowing the Type-C functionality to continue to operate while an alternate firmware is updated. It also allows for fail-safe operation if a firmware update fails or for any other stupid reason. Note that in your kit, the running firmware may be either FW1 or FW2. It doesn't matter which one is currently running in your case since we're going to update the alternate version, whichever one that is. Also notice that by default, if I read the device configuration information, it will read the alternate device firmware configuration. This operation can be done while the primary firmware continues to run. If instead I want to read the running firmware, I just click on the bootloader read checkbox first. This will read the running firmware configuration but it will also cause the chip to enter the bootloader mode so the Type-C functionality will no longer be operating. I won't check the box, so it will read the alternate firmware configuration. Once the configuration is read, I can see all of the settings for the chosen firmware image. There are lots of configurable settings under various menus such as the device IDs, which you may need to change for your specific product's requirements. For now, let's look at the power data objects, PDOs. Oh great, another TLA. Here, I can see all of the power profiles that the kit can supply. These are called source PDOs. And all of the power profiles that it can receive. These are called sync PDOs. Note that there are five sync PDOs specified. In this case, they are five volts, 900 milliamps, nine volts, 900 milliamps, 14.8 volts, 900 milliamps, 15 volts, 900 milliamps, and 20 volts, 900 milliamps. They're specified in 50 millivolt increments and 10 milliamp increments. It means 10 volts will show 200 and 1,000 milliamps will show 100. If you remember from the last video, the Type-C power adapter can supply two power profiles, 5 volts at 1 amp and 14.8 volts at 1.4 amps. Since the kit can accept 14.8 volts and requests 900 milliamps, which is obviously less than the 1.4 amps max that the adapter can supply, that's what it requests when I connect the power adapter. It asks for the higher voltage, 
since that will allow faster charging. But what would happen if I changed the 14.8 volts at 900 milliamps sync PDO on the kit to be 12 volts instead of 14.8 volts? Let's find out. First, click on the sync PDO2, which is the one for 14.8 volts at 900 milliamps. The voltage is shown in units of 50 millivolts and the current is shown in units of 10 milliamps. So for 12 volts, I'll change it to 240 from 296. Now, all I need to do is update the device with this new setting. First, I'll save the new configuration. Then I click on the configured device icon. Then I select notebook and again, I decide which version of the firmware to update. I'll use the default setting of normal to update the alternate firmware and then I'll click program. Once programming is finished, I will reset the board and then click on read from device again. Notice that the running firmware and the alternate firmware have swapped. This is because the CCG3 automatically runs the most recent valid firmware image, which in this case is the one I just updated. At this point, I could repeat the configured device steps again to update the other firmware image, but I won't do that now since the updated one is already running. In a production design, you would typically want both versions of the firmware to be the same. Now, I'll test out the change. First, disconnect the USB Mini B connector and change J3 back to pins 1 and 2, or run mode. Then, connect the Easy PD protocol analyzer to the PC and to the Type-C port on the kit. Run the Easy PD analyzer utility and start capturing data. Finally, plug the Type-C power adapter and see what happens. Notice that the power contract is established to be 5 volts this time because the kit no longer accepts the 14.8 volts power profile. Okay, now let's change the firmware back. Disconnect the Type-C power adapter, move J3 to pins two and three, and then reconnect the USB mini. Use the Easy PD configuration utility to read from the device, but this time read the running firmware instead of the alternate firmware configuration. Go to Sync PDO2 and change the voltage back to 14.8 volts by entering 296. Save the changes and configure the device. I want to update the running firmware, so I select bootloader flashing. Once programming is done, disconnect the USB mini B and change J3 back to pins one and two. Now if I plug in the Type-C power adapter, it will establish a power contract at 14.8 volts again. Cool. So now I've changed the configuration of a Cypress CCG3 device. The bottom line is that the Easy PD configuration utility allows you to customize your CCGX solution to reflect the requirements of your system without a bunch of software changes. However, sometimes you need to do something truly custom. So in the next video, I'll show you how to customize the solution even more by adding new functionality using the software development kit. As always, you're welcome to email me at alan underscore haws at cypress.com or tweet me at askiotexpert with your comments, suggestions, criticisms, and questions. Thank you.